the hypocrisy that dwells in millennials for instance where it is that like if you think about my one of my former friends like teaching children that were that did not have a tutor like uh, give a tutor for free type thing like kids that were smart you could tell that in the future they're going to be geniuses but they come from poverty or something she used to love giving her time to uh, like efforts of that nature basically charity work yeah that's what millennials are about they love to give charity even though back at their ranch and they in their back pockets they are out here hiding other people by saying la lawyer let down where you do all these other strange things against your own family members and friends and you like derelict but then you go and you give to charity you're altruistic you're a philanthropist you're this and that you want people to see you as something other than whatever rubbish that you truly are but you see when you raise kids to be as classist as my little sister has been made classist she does not care to be a hypocrite she just is good like there was a day when she looked at me like i was nothing and told me oh you're broke i don't know why you're even talking she papa said that to me when she was a teenager i'm broke she does not know why i'm even talking at some point one day when she was about 18 18 and a half 19 she told she said to me what are you still doing here why are you still here nobody wants you yeah like this is not a person that's trying to hide that she's trying to be nice she also speaks about me to her friends like i'm trash she is content with just basically like exposing her friends to my life because they are on the straight and narrow in terms of what they are what i'm trying to explain to you guys is that this gen x gen z this generation z a whole bunch of them don't take prisoners they pride themselves in savagery it is apparently a character virtue to be savage among them so they don't care to hide savagery in a way that we did we hid savagery they don't meaning they're not gonna foster themselves to give a charity when they feel like they need all their money they're not gonna force themselves to be there for the needy when they don't actually care they're not gonna force themselves so we're going to be dealing with an epidemic of abandoned poverty stricken people if you look at the if you watch the movie um uh, a divergent it's divergent right yeah there are factions that are created there's erudite and then there's um uh what is this uh candor or whatever yeah and then there is uh the the bold ones or the brave ones what do they call them uh i, I forgot okay there's 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 five factions that are operational having people put in silos as to what it is that, be, that they belong to and then there's the displaced the ones who are factionless they don't have a faction and they're the poor of that society and nobody takes care of the factionless either uh, what is it are you died and um, okay i said look nobody takes care of the factionless except for one group of people but the rest of society could not care less about the factionless if anything they feel as if they should just they should just be killed off killed off well gen x's are going to be a, 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 a generation absent of the lord's intervention if the lord does not intervene generation not x sorry but gen z the if the lord does not intervene in what under heaven it is that is the trajectory of gen z's they will end up in factions i'm the university but i'm the i'm the i'm an academic so i belong to academia i am loving so i belong to this particular faction i am brave so i belong to this particular faction i am um kind and benevolent so i belong to this kind of yeah and if at all people are on the outliers nobody is going to come through for them except for a very small percentage of the human race and when nobody is feeding the widow and the um, uh, and the orphan and when nobody is taking up the cause of the poor like the way that god's heart has a heart for there is no need for us to continue to push this earth anymore and seeing as gen z's are being raised to be this careless and they live in a class of society that is looking out for nothing but itself it's very vain and it does not really regard the the next man and the next man and the next man given that that's how they're being raised nothing in them is being created a moral compass is not being created that is sufficiently lofty to actually make them care about the suffering of people out there so whatever it is that my little sister is she stands to just be a monster in the future a monster of which is going to be getting eaten alive by her conscience but she will be ignoring it until she dies and goes to hell is that basic all that she is gunning for is money and if all you're gunning for is money with no building any real relationship no regard for any real homeliness family all that jazz if you are not actively going out of your way to build family and virtue and kindness and relationships whatever there's nothing left in society and to my family by and saying yes like it guys it's happening across the world in increasing measure matthew 10 it is written that from now on a man's enemies will be members of their own households i am being sought after like no man's business by evil men who keep on creating persecution faction per persecuting a division between me and my family as if though they were not already rotten and with this going on the lord is not going to let me commit suicide he's not going to let them drive me to a point of either killing myself or settling for some diseased ridden pestilent idiot in america before he will allow any of that to happen 
Jesus will just very simply take the body of Christ home. He will just take us home. One of two things can happen from this and I've been saying this over and over and over again. Either I get breakthrough somehow miraculously, somehow I get taken out of this. I get rescued. Something happens. I get a Samaritan that's going to harness me out of the situation which is highly unlikely. Or the rapture is happening. Society is far gone. We are in perilous times. Mankind are lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, disobedient to parent, unthankful, unholy, having a form of godliness, denying the power thereof, despisers of those who do God, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, have nothing to do with such people. That's what the world is looking like today. And with the world looking like that, there's nothing left to do but to rapture the body of Christ and then enter the planet into a tribulation. So take Barbara, take my mom, like grab her, run with her, literally run with the wickedness you have engendered and continue to raise children to end up like version 2.0s of you and see if the Lord does not just neutralize you already. The Lord keeps confirming to me that we're going home. Do you understand? The rapture is happening precisely because of all this rubbish, all this work that I'm doing. The devil is like, stop or die. He's telling me stop or die. And I'm like, if I stop, I die anyway. So really, I'd rather take my chances. He's telling me stop or die. I'm being threatened. That's why Kichikwaki was not anything again saying wrong. That's why I'm being given grief even though there's nothing wrong I've done. This woman is threatening to freaking come out of the bedroom with a flank kick when she hears me washing even a single dish in the sink. That's what she's threatening me to do with. Except if I don't wash dishes, she's gonna become hostile. Very hostile. Because apparently I'm this bum gathering dust at the back of a house that does nothing to contribute to the whole affair over here and she is now being made to basically slave after me. She puts me in a paradox at Cash 22, telling me, seeing as you're so upset by being our maid, our servant. But if I don't do that, understand the hostilities are going to ramp up. That's the family I live with. That's what my little sister grew up in the midst of. That's what calloused monsters I am in the midst of. And that is what under heaven is actually trying to make me covet it. How do you uh, expect that the day will ever arrive when I envy people like those? When I envy the manufacturing of so much evil? When I envy somebody that is so far gone that they're, pra they're practically a monster? When I am out here coveting marriages between men and women that are so drunk with sorcery in that marriage because by the way, I have a whole planet and each other. You don't even know what to trust. It is a fake posing affair. 24 hours a day, you eat lunch and dinner next to your husband and you don't trust him from a bar of soap. And yet you want me to covet marriages like those? The lawyer and I like, no man's business. You can't trust each other. You can't trust anyone. Just the other day you went and took an HIV test, it came back positive even though you've only ever slept with your husband. And you cannot tell anybody that because you don't want anybody knowing that your marriage is messed up so you keep on pretending for the people. You act a fool in front of everybody. Acting as if you're all happy. When you go home, you're fighting about the fact that why am I HIV positive? Why I gotta take ARVs for the rest of my life now? You cheated on me. On top of that, you gay. You've been sleeping with men. Like Jenna Jackson and why I get married. Stuff like that. But nah, at family events, you're acting like you're in love. You are keeping it together and just fell out for the sake of pretenses because at the end of the day, the two of y'all have taken out a home loan so big that if at all you were to break up, you'd have to move out and therefore lose your luxury and your comforts. All that matters is your comfort. All that matters is what you're pampered by. All that matters are your cars. All that matters are your material possessions even though everybody hates each other. You sleep in different rooms in that big fat giant echoing house of yours. But everybody thinks you're in love, you're happy. You keep on having first, second, third, fifth birthday parties for children that are so elaborate that everybody's out you're going to be praising you for Tabauri. You bought your child a little mini Ferrari for her fifth birthday. But you and your man don't get along. He's got a mistress that he's had in his life for three whole years. Three years, Gaufela. There's like a new baby coming out of that marriage that you don't even know about. But you want me to cover those relationships, all that marital unfaithfulness, all that infidelity, all that mistrust, all that lovelessness, all that witchcraft, how cold, empty and zombie like it is in your marriages. You expect me to envy all that? I had a dream where it is that I was shown me basically coveting like no man's business. Lignano, my former best friend who married a whole devil worshiper that reeled her back in even though she wanted to walk in. Gaditlar turned her into a monster. And now today, she will not leave me alone trying to make me feel scared that my biological clock is ticking. She's trying to make me feel nervous that I am getting old without a husband, without children, without any of that stuff. She's trying to make me feel so uncomfortable that I will finally take whatever under heaven is the menacing beast that she allowed to put a ring on her finger. Even though I'm currently ducking men outside. I'm currently ducking bullets coming from my like a whole devil worshiper coming into my life. You want to make me duck my own husband? You want me to duck inside a house I live? You want me to keep on causing even my children to duck? You want me to keep on hiding? No, please explain that to me. I'm a Christian. And if at all I were to end up married to an unbeliever, this thing that's going on in Majara thing is child's play. Do you understand? I turn, I ain't got jack on what my husband would become. If my family can do this to me, if my family can do this to me, but say, but say physically violent. Why do you think a, a man in the life of his wife who is a believer like I am, fervent, potent, always praying, 
always in the spirit, in Christ. What is the devil worshiper going to do to a woman like that? What do you think is going to happen to me if I cause this level of demonic manifestation in people that are, I don't touch them, I don't talk to them, I barely speak to my family. So a man that I sleep with in the same bed at night, in eternity, because he will have strangled me to death, you understand? I would get murdered. You don't get to be a fervent praying Christian in the presence of a devil worshiper and not have him manifest some incredible demons. Do you understand? So you are putting me in harm's way. So I have You will continue doing this. I cannot be wed off to an unbeliever. Why? Because I'm too godly. I am too prayerful. And I also am too spirit filled. There is a passage in the word of God that I heard in one of these streaming channels that I listen to on a loop every day. That says that with much wisdom and knowledge comes hardship. The person who has a lot of wisdom is always in a lot of tumult. Toil. I've gained a lot of understanding from what is going on in the spirit realm. People in the occult and what they do. I have a lot of sorrow in my life, therefore. So Moto, that is always being targeted by entities, fallen spirits, because of my spiritual gifting, has no business being in the life of an ungodly man. And I've got people trying to pressurize me to take anything that comes. Friend from high school, former best friend, that you are able to be safe in the hands of that bugger that you married because you're not godly. from bar of soap. You are unfilled with the spirit. You have no true relationship with Jesus Christ. And so for those reasons, you can easily glide in the presence of an unbeliever as an unbeliever and not get harmed. But na kotumpa, na kotunya. There's going to be a live round unleashed into my brain. Do you understand? I'm going to get stabbed to death. A man who's going to continue to unleash live rounds into my body long after I've died. A man that is going to be shooting me 7, 10, 20 times most likely home just to take away the last ounce of beautiful beauty on my face hydrochloric acid most likely home by a psychotic man that might even hide me in his basement after doing that while i recover while i recover do you understand constantly just causing me like putting babies on my stomach me giving birth to them and him jeffela having a whole bunch of children around nobody knowing what if you want me to marry a psychopath that is going to kill me you will continue to push me in this direction but then again that's the thing you're never gonna stop. You're gonna feel as if the just embrace whatever under heaven are your ancestors or whatever is this nonsense that you guys stand by. And you will see what this thing will ultimately work out for you. Yeah, you will say that until I'm six feet under. I'm not doing it. Do you understand? Neither do I even have a temptation to do it. A devil worshiper. Because I know what it's like to live with devil worshippers that aren't my husband. What in the world under heaven when I'm now creating a soul tie? Literally being wound together through sexual relations with a man. What is that going to do? Never mind to me but my children. You will thoroughly continue to insist on this. I am not doing it. It's like I said, it's not even a temptation. And on top of that, look at my family. I won't have anywhere to go. Unlike Tina Turner, I won't even have a mother that's gonna hand me back over to a wicked man. I will have no one. I'm not getting out of here in the, in the hands of a wannabe knight in shining armor that's holding a magic wand behind his hand, behind his back, trying to convince me that he's a Christian. People can only manifest demons in my presence that are devil worshippers. People that use witchcraft can only manifest demons in my grill. They can do nothing but. So I'm only saving my life by avoiding them. So I'm sorry, no thank you. I do not covet the marriage that you are in. Because you're comfortable in each other's presence as devil worshippers. But a devil worshipper in the life of a Christian is a dangerous, dangerous thing. All they can do is persecute us. All they can do is put us by attrition in a lot of sorrow. All they can do is squeeze us in the corner. All they can do is make out of us second class citizens like my family has. All they can do is bury us in a ditch. All they can do is hide our voices. All they can do is try and smother the gospel because they work for their father the devil. They don't even know what they're doing. They're like blind guys. All they do is walk into hellfire trying as best as possible to drag as many people just like the devil with them as they can. And so anybody that is trying to snatch souls out of hell actively is going to be an enemy of theirs. Blind or not, a man will kill me to understand. Just taken over by something. Something. I'm not about to give my hand over to some evil man that is going to temporarily give me relief. Following which, he's going to drive 10 rounds into my skull, still continuing to shoot long after I have died. Do you understand? But nah, black folk, it appears you really like violence in your communities, don't you? You adore it. You hug it. You smooch it. You make out with it. You're malevolent. You are diabolical. You are nefarious in a most prolific capacity. 
and yet you are trying to act as if they're right, normal. You are converting your children into little monsters. You are raising kids in the literally in the admonition of Satan. You are raising children in the admonition of the devil. All your kids know is the our father and just like Justin Jesus but doing the Hail Mary, the cross. That's all they know. They they imagine that that's all they need for religion. And even then, thanks to your wickedness and thanks to your hypocrisy, a whole bunch of them are even apostatizing from your religion. They are alleging to anything other than your Christianity, anything other than your Catholicism. They are finding other things to run with because they can see Uguti, this religion is not working. So what's the point of pretending that you are Christian? What's the point of pretending that you're religious? What is the point? They would much rather roll out here in these streets as nihilists the way that they are. I pizza and atheists at Ramon Tunzangata. They are stopping church. They are stopping fellowshipping with your God. They're not interested in him because he is not bearing fruit, apparently, allegedly, in your lives. So if you cannot honor him, why must I? That's what you're doing with tr with children. That's what you're doing. Get your guy. If I end up in a marriage with a wicked man, seeing as I don't have family to run back to, I don't have friends to run back to, you want to trap me in a marriage with an evil man, do you? But I understand, I will say no. I guess by I'm not going there. This little animal, Rocco America, on high and low. I've told you he's a psychopath. He's dangerous to me like hydrochloric acid. He's dangerous to me like an impending train while I am like tied, hand to like ropes and everything on tracks. He is as dangerous to me as sulfuric acid. He is as dangerous to me as a car accident, a heart attack, a brain aneurysm. This dude is avoidable. And yet people want me to come together with something like that anyway, just in case. Just in case it works out. Can't Y'all can survive in the marriages that you are in because God fell a little way. Do you understand? Matter when there's one sober person in a marriage and another one is sick, the sober person is in danger of being killed by some maniac that ought to be in a stray suit and yet he's out here putting a ring on her finger. I am not going to quickly walk down the aisle just so I can use my eggs before this particular like body of mine caves in and man opposes me. I can spy. I cannot die understand that even though it might make me cry that i don't have kids even though i long for them i'm not about to just go and give any animal some children i'm not about to just go and accommodate anything jefela he is all those miles away he's all those kilometers away and yet he still keeps on trying to kill me this this thing right now that is an operation is his this is what he's doing to me this is what this little bugger is doing to me and yet you want me jefela to allow some bugger of that nature to get a passport and to come and live in my country so he can finish off what he started whatever it is that he struggled to do his campaign to murder me did not work as spirits so he's going to then roll you know as i start by a gun he's gonna land on south african shores and then just finish into aikalile i'm not gonna get wet off to some devil worshiper what i'm gonna do is get out of this hole and black folk you will be humiliated you have what is coming to you coming do you understand poison me if you want to put a bullet in my head if you want to hire a sniper if you want to get an assassin do what you want to neutralize me but I understand I will not neutralize myself and if at all you will not neutralize me seeing as you want me out uh, physically and stop hiding behind death spells I guess you're just gonna have to move out the freaking way won't you just move out of the damn way do you understand move out so I can go to where I need to go seeing as you're too much of a coward to pull an actual trigger you are frustrated by my strength in Christ you are frustrated by the fact that I keep on surviving death spells you are frustrated by the fact that I won't be with men you are frustrated with the fact that I won't do what you want me to do come here and kill me yourselves be prepared city boy boy do it in your own capacity and if you cannot do it move out the freaking way move out the way seeing as you won't kill me but that's just the thing you are cowards you are sitting in corporate south africa and everywhere in the business arena are you calling yourself ceos you are out calling yourselves all these kinds of like uh, freaking wonderful terms but you can't even actually kill a person before a person gets into a car accident before a person commits suicide you have got to cause a death in a way that does not show that it's you and so for those reasons you can't even hire a sniper on me goodness gracious i have more mad respect for whoever whatever in kabi murdered aka than i do for all of y'all you are just as bad as the inkabi lezo koto anguazinina uguzi uguzi keep up behind the witchcraft that you're hiding hoping jefela to cause a personal ripple especially considering where you are capitalizing on the baba situation you are capitalizing on the situation that my family has put me in you are taking it for granted that because uruzi lady boto because uruzi lebato jefela batu ileng tseleng it's just going to enable this cause further is that what you're doing police investigation bring an assassin my direction 
do that because if you will not kill me with your own bare hands baga i'm not dying i'm not dying like i'm not going anywhere the lord has seen it fit to give me a whole bunch of health i've asked him personally for a head for, for a heart attack you are busy purging so since the lord has seen it fit to give me a whole clean bill of health I'm so healthy that tomorrow I'm gonna be and the next and the next and the next and the etc. Guess that again. Get like it's about actually. I'm happy to go and give other people my uh, however many years I left on my life because I don't want to live this life anymore. But the Lord has the way has seen it fit to give me more pillow because about I don't want this life. So really, you do me a favor by putting a bullet in my head. Do that, but you won't do it. You're trying to put it in my head through me. You're trying to put a noose around my neck through Kanete. Nakipulai. You are trying to kill me through me. Wangela. And you are a coward. Isapa. And put a, heart, a gun in my heart. Then on that day I will be grateful because goodness gracious, precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. To live is Christ but to die is gain. I hate this life. I don't want to live it. It's not like I am excited for tomorrow. No. I would also, just as you desire for me to die, love to go. But I can't take myself out. So if you won't get out from the hole that you're hiding in and actually come and grab a noose and put it around my neck, if you cannot come, I'm not going to harm myself. I'm not going to help anybody kill me, do you understand? I'm not going to help them. You come here. You come here in your own physical capacity, but that's just the thing. Ududzi, as a senior manager, busy running meetings, chairing them, talking to colleagues like you're a whole honest man while you're busy surveilling a woman hoping a good was bulala. That's what you're doing. You want to look like a stellar citizen. You want to look like a good guy. Because we're Audacity never. Oh no, one or stripes. When our baby stripes or orange, it'll never happen. You don't want to find yourself in prison because of the guala. Wow, oh, Tuki, oh, Tababato. Mara, when our Tosa, you are busy scaring people over Guachisa with sorcery. And so I never, oh, Bulaya, for real. You will never actually grab your sticky fingers that are like Vel Velcro uh, the strips and steal people's things. Oh, Kasu, who's the You will never ever rob a bank Ganneti with a gun and a mask over your head like actual criminals that actually have more honor than you right now because at least they're honest enough to go and break into an actual bank when I know you are out doing financial transfers of people's prosperity into other people's accounts from other people's accounts into your own and then you claim Mugutu and you worked hard for your money no you didn't Uhutu is enja Mara no you're not prepared to rob a bank you're not prepared to embezzle your company you're not prepared to money launder you're not prepared to do that which could get you arrested get your hands dirty because you're a coward well guess what God has to say about those cowards they're outside of the kingdom of heaven the, the idolaters the sorcerers those who are into sexual immorality all your wickedness is not going to do anything for you lady cowards you cannot commit crimes for real. Cause let's have a dangari. Let's have a orange. Let's have a tanyan. Marali kenta ba di di kebeku. You are criminals. Yet you're scared of 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 prison. Goodness gracious, go do your time. Go and know what it's like to be behind a bars. How about you go and be an actual criminal, so that at least you can be given clout among gangs. So you can be given clout among other people like you. Instead, you're hiding, hiding behind your like white collar suit. Let's let people let trap people. Wanaba chula mungera boka musoka ofela. That won't leave her alone. On the lipizi, as a mo kena mo pilomba high gang kana sari ken. Hamba ni guys. Banto amnya ma. Hamba ni boda proper imminent. Samo shwang. Aki na tava kalo na le malwe anyway, anyway you go and jefela mo mule fasi. Ang na angi spice kelem se nong keni bolile. You are rotten. You are rotten. Listen to South Africa go fella. And you're trying to act as if though there's nothing wrong. It ain't broken. So you're trying to fix it? Everybody also a wing from the dominoes that you keep on dropping. La force la hash. To a point where um fazi manjo kwa mela yo push ayo nzi sima ayo committi suicide angas ingen. Angas ingen. Lo atla unfosta over the edge. Eh, etle. I'm not going anyway. What's going to happen is that Nike ama hodimo and all of y'all are going to face the tribulation. The people of which are going to be despised after the rapture has happened. My mom and my sister is, are going to be despised. My whole family, my former friends. You are going to want people to comfort you, to walk around with you in these uncomfortable streets seeing as the tribulation has commenced and yet you're going to be despised for sitting on the chest of Christians making it impossible for them to evangelize. Go work for God. You will have made it impossible for them to do that until everybody was blind to the message of peace and so therefore they found themselves in this horrible time in the history of the human race from what i saw in my dreams my little sister is going to resent my mom right now they're kissing each other's behinds but in the tribulation my little sister will she's going to feel burdened she's going to feel burdened by the fact that she cannot keep herself healthy she's like i, I had a a vision last night a dream it was I was in and out of dream space where the Lord told me she's going to have a shortness of breath. So they're going to struggle to watch it. As I spoke about how it is that y'all need to band together with doctors that can give you prescriptions for months on end, years on end that you're going to be needing like ARVs, etc. I also spoke about asthma pumps for asthmatics. Asthmatics. My mom is an asthmatic. 
I get the I'm the asthma. Oh, there's so many like comorbidities. A papa hagan. I get the way I'm the deep comorbidity. That in the hagan, I tell them to muso because she will have all her comforts taken away. Hunger. All this daughter is very hard. It's hard. It's easier to go hungry. All almost the sun because already in the fella so so they let us get the Do you understand? Mara muto get the juju. Jaga maka peanut butter high nam chicken. All that jazz. Top of that, you always need to inhale into an asthma pump. Book the lagan gaga. When I a comorbidity, she needs to keep uh, taking insulin injections because she became diabetic, no the last because of old age. So there's diabetes and then there's asthma. And then Gamo, there is Dabao Re Oto Nida Dijo. And again, Doranyan. Tala. Uktela Uso Mandla. When I'm a comorbidity, Angaga. Right now, I am being afflicted by HIV positive men. Unga Telela Uso Mandla, Angaga. When I live for a comorbidity, you've got HIV, you need to take ARVs. Uya Telela. You cannot. When you are diabetic, in a wheelchair, when you've got HIV, when you've got ABCD, etc. Because the tribulation, I'm going to find you to be a burden. In the tribulation, people are going to find sick people a burden. And so if you were responsible somehow for somebody getting left behind, and I've had dreams of my little sister being very irritated. And she She's going to get exhausted by harsh living conditions and in a medication because I got tandy illizu laga somanda. Harati utla voice aga kibu waka mudim. Otoile everything that I have to say for coming from my mouth. And so for those reasons, I guess in my melee, even my counsel when I tell her, "Kya ho katlaba together, lady doctor?" Or ba ho feri asma pampo zay twelve, zay thirteen, zay twenty. Or so that you don't ever run out of breath. Somebody that's going to keep on giving you insulin um medication. Somebody that a uh, medication of which it must need a fridge. You need something that you can take a shot up your butt or whatever, or in your veins. I'm going to tell you how that stuff works. That does not need like refrigeration. The whole process of refrigeration, because you're not going to have electricity. Got on your telly, I mean. Now, when I want diabetes, get telly like about to. Back when you're the police, the ARV. Get telly like about to. When I'm the HPV. Get telly like about to. That have got, like I said. Chronic conditions, you've got comorbidities of a prolific nature, and so therefore the tribulation is just going to tip you over the edge. Nitelela Abantu that are trying to get you to go in the rapture, seeing as you know you, you, you're HIV positive. I have a talk of like a full blown AZ living out there in the wilderness or uh, taking the mark of the beast just so you can get given ARVs. You will ignore me. Langtella Ligula, Langtella, Lali HPV, Liconoria, the clap, Lingtella, Lidlin, Lissabone, Batum. That former friend of mine, unless she's gone for that laser surgery that she wanted, ne lesi for fusi singse the sa high side. Needing contact lenses or the brilli. Ne ma misa like not even four eyes, like nine eyes. The way the brilli side did take a thing. Cause kolo. If that, if those glasses they are they are they are trapped like they just break on the floor. Seeing as you you I mean goodness, how are you gonna be carrying around contact lenses as you're fleeing from the antichrist? I I now told you all the way. How are you gonna manage to keep on cleaning them in that solution? Blah blah blah. For like what three years? Go fail. How you gonna do that, girl? You need glasses unless you've gone for laser. In which case, good for you, cause now so born as in twenty one, so born a hand. Wow, born. Mm. That's what's good. Hi, born. How born? You are like piggy in Lord of the Flies. Or last time I kiri bread zaka ko next thing you fallen down a mountain, cause you couldn't see. Mara watel la kaje ko. Only seven eyes. Watel la kaje ko lo twenty five eyes. Watel la joang osa ko lo borna. You've got an issue with eyesight. When I show me so lawyer like no man's business or nakelo kilo kilo ngenga or nakelo desire. Oh, Bale, the kind of husband that you married. Oh, who don't belong into a marriage? Kaka Robela, like a nete. Hmm. Chance and Michaelo, kilo nanga. When I at your back and call, only busy. Are you in the streets walking around? Come and come and try twelve. How about no born? When I say kilo kilo, that one pair of glasses. Pen nanga, how about born? And the same husband that you're busy hanging on to for dear life, hoping. Oh, na, na. I'm going to cover the nyalo le muno jalo. Eh. That's what's good. I'm gonna write twenty before Jeff fell away. Now to move on. We're twenty one. That's what's good. Yeah. Before you go on right ahead. Before now, we'll ever cover that. Get a regular mahodi monkey wanna hand the fella with crystal with crystal 2020 vision. Well, when I'm on our day, that was supposed to be right or die by you. It's going to run away because Kalal is selfish, very selfish enough to go and force a woman around Munyala Sabat. Otoko siya mo wasa abon. Because who in the world does not run away from a gun? These men, baling nambi pemi, baling weak, baling flaccid. How about even next? Got protection ya basadi gun nete. They have not cared about us. These men in South Africa with their gender-based violence. Habana tabaka basadi. So you must understand. Hore. When it comes to survival of the fittest, these guys are going to run. And batu visi lejo. That's why kids say you better start women-only camps. Lete nyaya bano seven eyes. Ikiyo kakura ya the set ya the one day um prescription. What do they call this? Contact lenses. For I can't say it, guys. Like whatever. For like ever in a day. 
di prelit zalo na chola ndi pete twenty ayaban laka hon like go on right ahead like you you all need to prep because the tribulation is coming sing as itela haka na you know you're not gonna re repent on this side how to repent I know you're not gonna repent now you don't understand killing kwachi sa the way that my family kwachi sa ngateng you're gonna keep on afflicting me abusing me feeling guilty then coming back to afflict and abuse me again and again and again and again putting me on the precipice of suicide over and over and over again until I get taken so ke ha wena na le asthma u dile ka tabaro to tlhaka fela so gono hema or take my advice when I was born in one my 27 take my advice or deal with the fact that your deadbeat husband is going to leave you still trying to find your way around cuz you dropped your glasses when on a ngolaza ke o ka repenta or take my advice so that you don't die from full blown aids in the wilderness ba go tlogetse cuz when you you're slowing everybody down you are disrespectful in the worst way and yet you don't even understand what's coming to you tomorrow leng khorisi sa ka batho that find any excuse any reason at all under heaven ho long tumpa ka rabisha bon ka sa na batlo ba guilty a tlo batlo bo le na nyelo nyelo o ska tlo ntela o ska tlo ntela i'm not your freaking yo yo you don't get to be nice to me today and tomorrow you treat me like trash kicking me around and got i'm nothing you don't get to do that you who are ungrateful o ke go thusetse go rothola everything le ko ra e ke mawe rekileng you would not have been able to buy it if it wasn't for my wicked for my smarts for my wits ke go thusetse go rothola such a big fat job that you were able to pay off bond ya gago and get a new car and yet you treat me like trash telling me about water on the floor ko kitchen ke so tlhatse di jana ke re letsatsi ka o fail all you can do is commit abominations in the sight of god how could them utlo pitsa me next thing you pride yourself in the fact that at least you've got two other kids baleng ga ita ba ga ita ba kula ba hlanya motlong ba ka o fail ba kopane ba kula ba hlanya cuz why ba ntita son why are they allowing you to do this to me there's no more family don't you see you have destroyed the earth you've crashed it you've trashed it and so now let the lord take the children out Let him take Christians away because you have the apostasy coming. Let that away. How are you going to do this to a person? More to a whole living human being. How are you going to experiment so much on a freaking person? These are human experiments, don't you see? It's like a mad scientist, like Dr. Death at Auschwitz, why Hitler? Experimenting on human beings eugenics. That's what this is. You're like Margaret Sanger now, aren't you? You're into freaking eugenics. You are experimenting on human lives and you're trying to see how this is going to end. You're trying to see what untoy fela jwang. How are you going to do this to me? How are you going to put a person in such a Hunger Games arena? How are you going to go and take a person and just like kill them every 3 weeks? You're casting a spell to see if this time around it will work. I'm a freaking human being. Your witchcraft is like medical experimentation on people, injecting them with all different kinds of weird stuff, trying to see what happens and if they die, I mean really it's just another one. Piling bodies on top on top of each other and then burning them, gassing them, putting them in mass graves. Because I guess round 1 of experiments did not work. So we'll try again with new test subjects. And then you go on your, on your human trafficking mission to get another 100 people to experiment on. These are human experiments. And you witches keep on trying over and over and over again. And you don't see Dr. Death in yourselves. Halipone as Hitler's main scientist at Auschwitz. You don't see that in yourselves. You don't see yourselves as Nazis. You don't see yourselves as war criminals. You just see yourselves as people that are getting your own futures. And so another garabo lentsa nyoko eli yentseng wa le hlasa. You keep on experimenting with love spells, death spells, love spells, death spells. Make a settle, make a compromise, make a marry this, make a marry that. Look at our force and Jefela la force, la force, la force. Make sure she never comes up for air. I cannot be embarrassed. I cannot be disgraced. Nga se hlazo na bo tlo kwa kana. And so you keep on lentsa le tshala motho ka di tlhare over and over and over and over and over again. And you think God is not going to just stop that? You're nihilistic. That's a sad thing. You're an atheist whatever you are. You don't think anything happens when you die. Goodness gracious. Let somebody experiment on you for eternity then. How about you burn forever? How about you see how in the world it is that you thrive in constant attrition 24 hours a day with no relief. Let's see how that works out for you. Seeing as you're so shallow. You think you can create hell on earth for people like this and not go to hell? You think you can impoverish people like this and not be made eternally poor? You think you can just reap like so all this destruction and not reap whatever it is that you had coming? You thoroughly believe that you can continue like this? and not have something horrific coming you're naive you're naive like in the worst way you have decimated south africa you have tried to have your bread buttered on both sides have your cake and eat it too by destroying every last one of your competitors moving them out the way so you can be queen so you can be king and in so doing experiment on human beings until you are just a like literally just this menacing monster that keeps on throwing people into the flames of hell cursing people's souls trying to send them to the abyss trying to get them to just honor god you are literally asking people to go to hell the way that the devil works to the nail day and night open up without rest just sending people to hell libana wa satan that's all you are your devil worshipers don't you see all you do is uh, like proliferate the agenda of the devil you propagated you stand with each other you toast you cheers the way that my mom and my sister support each other oh goodness it's it's like it's it's actually sickening it's disgusting how after they treat me like trash they will talk with each other and carry like i'm um, the scum of the earth and i can't i'm no one
They just throw me out and go, I'm rubbish. But what then? I'm rubbish. They treat me like I'm rubbish. Like Babu Gama need their feet. How about that? They then sit with each other and comment on what's going on on Netflix. I mean, that level of coldness dwells in men like Hitler. So when you're like a Hitler walking around against your own child experimenting, you're freaking Kim Jong Un. You know how Kim Jong Un killed his own family members? But now she's sitting in South Africa calling herself somebody's mom. She's sitting in South Africa calling herself somebody's sister. But she's got the genetic disposition, the mental disposition, the psychopathic disposition of Kim Jong Un. A man that to get to his goals will not only impoverish an entire country, leaving them destitute, enrich himself, but also kill family members that have qualms with anything he has to say. You, you go and you mow all of South Africa to the ground. Just so you can be okay and pampered just by yourself. And even family members that stand in your way, you kill. Mabito are the family members in your demonic rituals, in your seances. When they ask you, is there anybody at all that you want to sacrifice? You easily just are like, bro, tamba, bro, swusiso, bro, jabo, bro, vose, bro, zugiswa, bro, lerato. But you just vomit. You just vomit people's names. Bro, ntobeko, bro, ntembiso, bro, tandega. You just vomit people's names. Next thing, all of those temb those tembisos, those tandegas, those zugiswas, those voses. You're out here groveling like a little dog. What's on my mean, Hashem? Daddy, get lady. Daddy, daddy, crocodile. Come on, fungabo. But don't worry, I'm. Hell is real. La Do you understand what I'm saying? It's real, and you're going there for vomiting poor leratos just so easily. Lerato of which was sent to hell because you wouldn't give her a chance to give her life to Christ. So I mean, I really. If you are participating in the mutiny against people's souls being condemned, then I guess yours needs to be condemned more so even than Neratos. You need to burn in a hotter part of hell than all of your victims. Don't you see? All of them that are begging God for justice, seeing as they are now in the eternal lake of fire, you gotta burn in a hotter part. You easily just give people's names in demonic rituals. And now look at what my family is doing to me. And if at all she finds out in you don't care if they die. I had a sabbat da hara na na tabor na ki toka fale ge we zikin mundimun cares kalo kanya ro mundimun alaba God Almighty in heaven cares that I should not die. You might not care, Cain, after killing your brother Abel. You might not give a rat's behind. It's okay. You don't gotta. You might not give any hoot about tabor. You are sending a person to hell, but God cares. You might not be troubled or faced in any way. That you are literally trying to squeeze a Christian into such a tight corner that she will blaspheme the name of God and commit suicide. But God does. And so seeing as God cares, it doesn't matter that you don't. It doesn't matter that you don't care. Because God cares. And you're not him. Top of that, he's bigger than you. Top of that, he has power to afflict you. Top of that, he has power to just kill you and send you to the hell that you keep on insisting Karabo goes to. So bye-bye. Hambani with your heart attacks. Go on with your car accidents. Go on with your inability to survive. Hardship in the tribulation because you're such a spoiled brat. So spoiled were you that you couldn't kill people physically because you kept on using demonic rituals that you eventually took the mark of the beast because goodness, you need to eat some real food because like Yeah, all the best, okay? I was busy telling a story before I ended up ranting about what the heck my family's doing to me. I was explaining to you Cosmo City, Monikulating, where my family threw me to. That second grade lifestyle that I was living in a complex that every so often stank of like garbage because there was not no proper protocols, no proper process to remove garbage from the complex and so we had to deal with the stench that was afflicting us every single like third or fourth day or whatever until ultimately pick it up would come and collect dustbin all that dirt for baking it stank up the whole complex i'm a baker i cook and I, I bake well that too but i bake so i had these kids that were always around me go cosmo city that i wanted to bake for and i wanted to make red velvet cake I wanted to make red velvet cake. So I went to Cosmo City. I go, what was it? Like some gassy supermarket. Like the kinds of supermarkets that are indeed the whole business model, the whole value proposition is premised around low income households. Like you're never gonna find a, an, a boxer in like North Riding. Like it's not gonna happen. You're not gonna find a, is it or OK Bazaar or whatever in Reimser. Like, you get my point. There are certain farm, like fast-moving consumer goods stores that are franchised around low-income neighborhoods. They only put them go Soweto. They only put them go Alex. They only put them go Guguletu, Sochanguve. They only put them in Gassis because they are marketed for us who live in these Gassis. And so I went to one of these. It was a store of that nature. I forgot the name of it. But it's the kind of store that you can only find. Kodikasi. And it was in Cosmo City. And I went there trying to go and get cream cheese. Because I wanted to make cream cheese frosting. Seeing as I was trying to make red velvet cake. For the kids. And I could not find red 
Well, I could not find cream cheese for the life of me. I had lived in the burbs almost, I guess, about 20 years at that stage. And I had never under heaven gone to any store and not been able to find certain things. And cream cheese was one of them. Cream cheese is just so commonly produced and found in shelves that I could not for the life of me believe that it was not there. I scanned and I scanned and I scanned and I looked and I looked. Nekhunale ultra male, because apparently that's all that we can basically have for dessert. Nekhunale lebese, I guess, in gomazi, you know? in that dairy section but cream cheese my buttock nah there was no cream cheese you guys no cream cheese and i just looked there and i was like oh perhaps they haven't stocked it maybe it's all gone it's all finished maybe it's all finished now guys cream cheese makes cheesecake cream cheese makes red velvet frosting cream cheese uh is also found in some savory dishes cream cheese is uh is found often in many other cakes never mind red velvet like um carrot cake you use cream cheese frosting for that and my thing with that is what makes you think black people don't use cream cheese i mean no seriously come on let's talk about it. what makes you think that black people don't make red velvet cake we've been the ones that have been baking for white households for like a minute now so seeing as we got like really skilled at baking for white families why wouldn't we then go and transfer now that we're all out of a party that baking skill into our own families now because i want to make chocolate not chocolate cake what do you call this red velvet cake blue velvet cake or even car car carrot cake in my house black people were known we love to bake like we love to bake we do it's like a whole thing but apparently we just like fella godi queen's cakes is that it you know but nothing so elaborate and so like you know luxurious as as as, as red velvet cake really so nothing oh wow for real i imagine that this must be a mistake so what i did was drive to not a mistake sorry but a stocking issue so this was one of those like boxer stores like a, a, like basically one of those you find them only in the gussies type stores yeah so then i drove further out down i drove further down because first i went to this one that was right near where i stayed i then drove further down to a pick and pay a large one in a mall go cosmo city looking for this cream cheese because i had to get my cream cheese i am trying to make some red velvet cake for the kids and i'm making everything from scratch including the frosting guys i could not even find it at their pick and pay and for me it was like let me save this i couldn't even find it at their pick and pay do you understand what i'm saying the i couldn't find the cream cheese at their pick and pay now pick and pay recently uh what do you call this and it was a new pick and pay by the way it was new because the mall was new pick and pay recently uh, uh, revamped it upgraded itself it used to be on the same sort of kind of like level or scale as like perhaps the checkers and then it upgraded and now it's like basically competing with woolies y'all would know that's a thing okay so given that pick and pay has upgraded to trying to be like Woolworths and compete with Woolworths now you would imagine that okay fine so I couldn't find it at like a bit of a uh, an okay bazaar down the road this is pick and pay I'm gonna find cream cheese frosting not cream cheese frosting sorry but what is cream cheese to make frosting I was able to find icing because I mean they're happy to give us icing but it's basic icing nothing so elaborate and queenly as cream cheese frosting what are you doing all you make is vanilla frosting and that's it girl when you're black that's what that was suggesting and i could not find at the pick and pay i could not find cream cheese at the pick and pay too at which point i was like what under heaven is going on here what's alarm what's going on and so i, I reached a, a little conclusion where i was like oh i know what's happening it's the irresponsible marketing team and basically all of these franchises yeah all of these stores all over south africa whenever they are stocking shelves for certain neighborhoods and communities they imagine that such and such a thing can't possibly sell here so we're not going to stock it little industrial engineering models for stocking stocking models pricing models whatever it is that they do their little value propositions their financial models their um you get my point the aggregates that they come up with to figure out whether or not something is going to sell in this particular ecosystem i mean it's not like you're selling diamonds for crying out loud it's cream cheese and it will sell y'all yeah, know mm -mm. guys i could not find cream cheese because apparently the marketing team and the chain of stores right for pick and pay for the johannesburg region did not find it necessary to get cream cheese stocked at cosmo city pick and pay based on what now i'm sorry like based on what based on we we can't make elaborate desserts we 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 don't we, we don't like cheesecake is, is that right anyway yeah i guess that was it right mm. and then i thought about who under heaven are the marketing teams 
at the chain of bra at the chain like is the at store level at chain level I then remember that I used to work for MTN and at MTN I guess I also worked with marketing teams who also could make decisions as to how much product to put out there in the stores you know I worked with quite a few uh, project managers who were working with with like like stores like MTN stores MTN chains like out there in the wilderness how much product stocking pricing industrial blah blah mm. And yeah, so it was mixed, nicely mixed. It was everybody. It was Indians, it was blacks, it was made up of white people. It was everybody. The teams were diverse. So I knew that there had to be black people in the decision making teams for stocking certain foods in certain neighborhoods based on probability or likelihood of it getting bored. And black people were just happy to sit by as they made a decision to not stock cream cheese in Cosmo City. Black people and marketing teams were happy to sit by as they made a decision to not stock cream cheese in any store in Cosmo City. Agassi. I remember thinking, I wonder if they have it at Soweto, Soweto or Alex. I mean, if I had the petrol and I was all investigative, if I, feel, if I was feeling like, like, um, like a sleuth to go and just be a detective for a day, I could have actually driven all over Johannesburg, gone to all the Gassis in Johannesburg and just checked to see if there's cream cheese on the store shelves. To see if at all this is a ubiquitous South African uh, Johannesburg issue or if it's just a Cosmo City issue or if it's just a pick, pick and pay issue and just at one store or whether guys I could not find cream cheese anywhere in Cosmo City. And all I could think about was Corpus Africa is teaming at the folds with diverse races among the races of which are black employees and they could not find qualms with the decision made to not stock cream cheese or Cosmo City. Who the heck made that decision on our behalf? It has to be basically the V the, the it has to be the approving or the ratifying power of black people. Because if white folk are ignorant enough to be like, no, why, why black people don't eat cream cheese? A little bit of a sort of fellow should have been like, I'm so sorry, John, uh, well, based on what exactly? That's what I would have done. Like if I was part of a team in that decision making space, I would have been like, um, I'm sorry, Miranda, based on what exactly do you believe that we don't eat cream cheese? Because I'm always out here baking it up a storm trying to get red velvet cake. You're not doing proper market research. Let's go back to that drawing board. Let's test it. Let's test only a few units a month and see if at all they sell. And if they do, I guess we'll have to uh, ramp up or, so, you know, increase the number of units that we put on the shelf. But we can't just make an assumption that black folk don't like cream cheese. What? Or use it in their cooking. What? Like, it was just disturbing to make that observation. Anyway, whatever. So black people are the one that stood back and were like, yeah, no, highly unlikely that in the car see, they're going to be needing cream cheese. Oh my goodness, no koto wena jabu. You are always, like, engulfing those andicho freaking cupcakes is he divine they black blue and red velvet like you're always all up in that business like that's the only reason you go to and show is for the cakes and not even so much for the pizza you're black aren't you jabu what do you think that they made you cre taste cream cheese anything because you moved to north riding is that what's going on over here jabu is that what's going on there in Ailwe? come on let's talk larato is that what's going on so are you telling me that nobody from Soweto is actually like literally trying to have a black velvet or a red velvet cake for their baby shower? Kaneti. Yeah, no, the same people in Soweto of which have to go where for work? Literally the suburbs. Where go the office they get fed all different kinds of finger sandwiches during funny little lunches. The finger sandwiches and the tiny little cakes of which are also little tiny blue and red and or black velvet cakes. So I mean the Che Godulanko Pinville, it appears kinda likes red velvet. So why wouldn't she try to get cream cheese? Like goodness gracious, cheesecake has been my favorite cake since I was something like, like maybe 14. Because my mother brought it home one day and I was like, oh, yum, yum. And ever since then, I've been like, wow, cheesecake any day, any minute now. Please give me cheesecake. Give me, give me, give me. So if at all from the age of 14, I'm out here like being in love with, with, with like something made from cream cheese. Why would you assume black people don't care about cream cheese? I was a black kid that experienced cheesecake for the first time when I was about 14. No, I didn't experience it for the first time when I was about 14. I experienced good cheesecake for the first time when I was about 14. Before then, it was all, always very kind of bitter. Not bitter, but too tangy for my liking. Almost tasting like mayonnaise. Nobody know, knew how to make it right. And then one day, we went to Mug and Bean. We went to Mug and Bean, and my mother ordered a cheesecake. Yeah, blueberry. And I did not order it because I had had bad experiences with cheesecake in the past, but I took a bite from hers and then I ordered it after her. 
I, I asked her to order it myself because it was just so delicious and ever since then I was just beside myself with adoration for um what is this this cheesecake the cheesecake of which my mother was already a fan of it when did she develop fanhood for it my mother grew up in the Gassi longer than I she was basically all of her childhood entering into adulthood living in the, in the Gassi so unlike me who has moved to the burbs at around like 10 8 11 no not again 8 9 10 that's when I moved to the burbs my mom was there from zero to pace maybe like 23 and yet here it is that this woman was out here enjoying cream cheese pudding dessert why would you assume that black people don't like cream cheese or don't have any use for it no purpose is that what's going on yeah well that whole little observation yeah cream cheese upset me greatly because i discovered that black people in this country are flat like a tire bap bap nut. you are not raising voices of course look at how you have abandoned black people in the gussies first and foremost and when you become super powerful you pretend that we are not there and then on top of it you actually derail other black people a means of punishment for black people by black people is to impoverish them until they end up seeing as if though that's not where we come from yeah you know when you forget your roots so violently that you will go on right ahead and imagine it a, a, a whole dastardly punishment to put somebody in their humble beginnings again it is no wonder we never ever get to a point of being really badly afflicted by poverty when it hits us because you never ever let us get out do you we we just survive in Tupego even when we come from wealth even when we were born into middle income upper middle income wealthy families and we end up poor we somehow still look really good in that poverty don't we because you make sure black people that you know ain't nobody out you're gonna stay okay so uncle moon don't you feel like gotta be like uh she looks really good for someone also dealing she looks really good for someone who's not chill it yeah you keep doing that to black people she looks really good for somebody or or side of like is wrong for my i mean goodness that's where we come from isn't it so i mean what makes you think that by taking us back to mikuku retro for fore that's the thing you are punishing one another by regressing the whole black community back to humble beginnings hoping that your enemies that you are fighting with are going to be ravazad and then they just like bounce around like kangaroos like karabo still looking really good for someone who belongs to and that then becomes the qualm you have and so you do a, a little spell somewhere along the way in the dream i was groveling around on the floor feeling like trash breaking out into acne again i mean guys i've got all this hyperpigmentation that's fading because i finally prospered to find some kind of a routine that works against acne and in my dream i had pimples again and i felt like trash and i was groveling around on the floor feeling like nonsense regarding between black folk uh, dermatology seeing such experts as these is something that came to us only as a incorporates all along the little bees are not blue magic blue black magic the cutie cure i came for color and really busy got alternatives to cure our acne without seeing a dermatologist because i guess we have not had the luxuries of gentrification all our lives have we so i mean when a chick has got clear skin in the black community and uh, why under heaven don't you think why why under heaven do you think what i can put a well cystic acne for the rest of her days when black people because of how you just love throwing us into poverty have manufactured products to make sure right atlantic is our bonnet doctor juice up it's all right because i'll find something i've cleared my skin or at least it's clearing i'm no longer getting new acne using the products that are below the belt it's a black market say under reps that everybody underestimates those kinds that don't get advertised ever all that much by youtube channels that are that do skincare and have got sponsorships and affiliates <laughs> yeah no you would never find what i'm using on my face in those youtube channels because anybody trying to proliferate those particular products why because they are for us poor people to make sure that acne is at bay for us we have our own thing that we do so when black folk are thrown into poverty they don't just leave their cystic acne pee they don't just sit around they don't just sit around basically reeking dust baking and gathering dust they go back to basics that they would never have smelt gone for do you understand back when i guess you had an ability to purchase for yourself the services of a dermatologist that made you look all powdery and pink in the morning and scary like a ghost because you can't afford 
to see a dermatologist. Oloe Gira, Kemphale Kalamine, Wangutra. Now, presently, I'm using some product at 65 Randa, aka Tosengo Chinatown, Town. Ebay Bizang Omni Gold, that has got kojic acid and vitamin C in it, yet it's 65 bucks and it has cleared my acne. I've, uh, I've, I've had to go to your not black market at the underground to go and get cheap products to clear my acne because I couldn't see a dermatologist. But in my dream, I was out here groveling, apparently. However, after cov not before coveting, Lingalola, my friend. Lingalola haya le mona krensha po oha le bamu wona, bamu wona like no man's business. Ore Oscar, don't walk down the aisle to that girl. Oto le mal. Don't turn to na chano kilo ba le mona over mona ozalo. Kina le kala main. Eh ba chun kira iti kita para kala main. Kimo hana no. I'm straight like akira kile kama mistake apo so by mistake. I bought a sunscreen. Yeah, cheap inya na could have been like sixty rand or something. It let le bato ano. Yeah, ing si aka white cast ing wiam slab. Maria says, and it works really well combined with all my other products that. Well, uh, by the time I am able to buy sunscreen that does not do me dirty like that, just to help me continue to clear my skin, it, it leaves such a hard knock white cast that you can even see it. Modi eyebrows in Zag. The way I'm white cast, it blow on my brows. It just sits there all day. Yeah. And makes my, my eyebrows look a little gray. That's my sunscreen. It's got a white cast, but it's doing the job, isn't it? It's SPF 60. It can get strong. Mm. Omni Gold. The product is a Dr. Rachel. Cheap. Everything is under 100 bucks. Everything is under 50 bucks. And yet they are clearing my skin. Omni Gold Yatenya is so harsh that once you get for five days and put it down, five days and put it down. Otherwise, it will change your skin tone. Saka. It gets a yellow bow, nujeka, kanyimbao, le keli kumal. So once you get back here for the because vele vele, it's, it's, it's cheap. So for those reasons, you can't just hoi it. Once you create the protocol, you have dermatologist. But that's the thing. We find a way around things like those as black people because really that gene. Ya ho zavaif. Mara wena upizi hao stoke chikin in the lona lona lusa black people. Middle class black people working in corporate South Africa. You're not even telling your white colleagues, your Indian colleagues in your marketing team that why under heaven would you make an assumption that there is no that black folk don't need cream cheese for Cosmo City? It's an irresponsible decision. The way the way you force your you force your, your fellow black colleagues lawyer into obscurity and then make one to I can make you Tikura when she was seven years old and let is mungo atengi oh hopola from domestic work high oh see on a basebele za kontu on a sebele sa cutikura in khambi like all that minty stuff yeah but another was so clear when I was told to play with the way later with this game it was the ailing at the fellow in a call my air ten hand what way like a cutikura thing and then when it clears her skin, I mean, really, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Because like somebody's like, cute, 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 When was the last time you ever saw a cute, cute, ad on TV? That's just my thing. My thing. When was the last time you ever saw a Lucky Star ad on TV? That's just my thing. No, you've got a subscription to Netflix. So, um, you've got a subscription not only to Netflix, but also DSTV. You've got a subscription to Showmax. You've got a, you watch YouTube for television. And adverts on YouTube. They don't go out like that. Cute, cute, high is not about to go and advertise on YouTube. It's too much money. Hello, man. Can you call me back? Let me create that logo YouTube. Hmm. The product is it's a Zarona. Zaba Chobanso. Hmm. Because it's so tricky. Let me laugh. Thing. You're not going to get massive advertising budgets for them because, but it's about black people because of their poverty. They're gonna buy like they self market. They self market. You are not going to find tissue oil layer or pep advertised on TV, but you might find bio oil advertised on TV. Because the kind of TV that you subscribe to is not for low-income families. I have a regular television streaming. It's cheap. That comes in a box for 300 rand a month. Yeah, then maybe you might get uh, Advertia Premastov. Maybe you might just then get Advertia Cutie Raya Kalamine. You might get... Uh, I mean, goodness, when was the last time you saw Kirli Advertia Kemfa, guys? There are certain things that are just not being sold. But yeah, you certain, yeah, but... If you just open YouTube all over and fell and paste it on the other side, but but since I'm a Kumalo, yeah, you certain, yeah, nan, yeah, nan, the Madita, yeah, you certain. You just want these actors and actresses vitamin C, yeah, Ghanaian, all over the show. Cutie, cute, rash, multi, mura, kalamang, shmalamang, kamfa, shmamfa. All of these cheap products that back in the day they used to get advertised, but they don't anymore because now they're just self-purchased. They are now rather proliferating what they want you to buy. However, there are still things that are still working perfectly operationally. And so black folk, when you throw us, black fellow black folk, into obscurity, all you're doing is sending us back to Kalamine, but you are not sending us back to cystic acne. All you're doing is sending us back to kojic acid anyway that's got such a high percentage that if you keep on using it, you might just get patchy skin, but you gotta give your own self, your own dermatological advice as to how to use this thing so as to not basically mess with your skin tone. 
because they can't do it themselves like youtube is not about to go and advertise cutie cura languta black magic blue magic whatever uh ponds not even ponds you're not every so often it squeezes into these markets let it it, it it gets advertised but what i'm trying to explain to you is that the product is up poor people in the black community they are self-marketing because these people have a challenge and so they always look for the cheapest product whenever they go out there and buy and they will choose it only because it says what it says on the label and they will experiment with it and if it works they'll run with it they are no longer spending a whole bunch of their budget on advertising and i would imagine one of the biggest reasons why they're not even spending that much money on advertising is because i guess our corporates are full of strange ominous weirdos that are black that are so incredibly blinded i can't say gentrified let's just say blinded from the true cause of black people that they can't even stop a final a final decision they can't even veto a decision to not put cream cheese on a pick and pay shelf only because it's in cosmo city black employees are not standing against that they're not vetoing that decision so it is no wonder south africa is being destroyed then isn't it it is no wonder i'm sitting here unemployed it's because black people you thoroughly think that li different when you move to the burbs you thoroughly think that you're different when you get jobs you think you're so different even though hoodlock was away to go guys see what's as a as a teenager can shop man now that you're working in corporate south africa all of a sudden you think you're the only one out here in these streets eating cream cheese for real I mean, it deserves an annihilation, doesn't it?